record. Okay, so we're recording, but don't worry about anything that like seems weird or may happen. We can have Dave Danielson edit this <laughs> in the future. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to let everybody in and then I'll give a quick introduction and then turn it over to you. So let me get everyone in here. And then for sound for me is all right. Yep, you're perfect. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just, I think the camera that, okay, cool. Yep. All right. And here come our guests. We'll give everyone just a moment to enter the room here. All right, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Um, we're really excited to have you with us. My name is Jenny Kosek. I'm Community Engagement Coordinator for the City of West Dallas. We're doing this webinar series this year to give residents a chance to meet city staff and learn more about city services. So thank you for joining us tonight. Just a few bits of housekeeping. This event is being recorded. So to make the most of your experience and reduce the use of bandwidth, please close any other open applications on your device. Questions can be shared in the chat box at the bottom of your screen, and we'll try to answer them at the end of the program today. And watch your inbox in the next few days. We want your feedback and a follow-up survey will be sent to you so we can get some feedback about today's webinar. Our presenter today is Derek Hoppe. Derek has been with the City of West Dallas for the last five years, working within the Department of Public Works, Streets and Sanitation Division. He has served as truck driver and now truck driver lead. He enjoys keeping the city clean on refuse and recycling routes and interacting with residents while responding to sanitation service requests in the field. Derek, thank you for joining us tonight. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, so to start off, we're covering uh, brushing up on brush and yard waste recycling within the city of West Dallas. A uh, brief little overview, most of the brush and yard waste collection is handled by the streets and sanitation division. And then for brush collection where it's a large amount, the forestry department would also get involved because they have specialized equipment for collecting it. Our department itself among sanitation is about 22 truck drivers. There are two leads, myself, Derek Copy, as well as Brian Hill and then our supervisor, uh, Sarah Devitz. And that makes up who's collecting your refuse, recycling, brush, uh, anything like that, as well as the street side of our division. They handle the actual yard waste collection when you're throwing things into the curb line, because again, they have operators that handle the equipment that collect that. We'll be going into that later. So that's a brief little overview of our department. Uh, we can begin, we're gonna start with, uh, what is brush? And we get a lot of calls on this. It's, you know, between brush and yard waste. Brush is any type of woody material from trees, shrubs, trimmings. Uh, it could be tree branches that fall during a storm, or if you're going to be pruning any type of uh, bushes that would run along a fence or anything like that, that would all be considered brush as well as uh, anything down to small amounts of sticks that might fall out of a, tr a large tree. And I attached a photo, this is out of our brush bin at the yard, kind of an example where you have uh, from like a pine tree or other types of uh, branches and what have you that people bring into our collection yard. So where can brush be dropped off? The first location is our municipal yard. That is 6300 West McGill. It is essentially 63rd Street at Beloit. You can usually see it because of all the big yellow trucks that are parked in the parking lot. And we are fairly busy for the most part of the week with residents bringing items in. We, have, we are open six days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 7.15 a.m. to 3 p.m. Wednesdays were open late for anyone that might need time after work to drop something off. We're open from 7, 15 a.m. to 5 p.m. Again, that's on Wednesday. So any time you know, after work you wanna run something in, we're open till 5 p.m. And then we are also open on Saturdays 
from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. And usually if you're bringing a, a large amount in, don't try uh, getting there right at 3.30 because we do lock up at 3.30 sharp. So is there anywhere else brush can be dropped off? As a matter of fact, there is. There is our, our Morgan Avenue drop-off site, which is uh, 3601 South 116th. That is on 116th Street, just a little south of Morgan Avenue. And for that drop-off point, it is open seasonally. So it's only open for spring in the summer and a little bit into the fall. Uh, again, it's June through September, June 1st through September 3rd, the hours being 7.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. on Mondays, and then 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Tuesday through Fridays. So that location is also open later in the summer hours. Again, if you're doing yard work after work or anything like that, you do have that uh, option to drop items off there. I will note it's not on the slide. Yard waste, brush, dirt, stone, items like that can be dropped off there. It does not accept garbage or recycling. The, in, in, nothing like that can be brought out there. We, we don't have like a compact or anything. It's mainly just organic material that can be dropped off there. And also once, uh, I wanna say it's after Labor Day, the hours get reduced and it's just Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Is there a fee to drop off brush? There is a fee, both the Municipal Yard and Morgan Avenue, except between one to eight cubic yards, that's daily. So that the eight cubic yards is the maximum amount you can bring in in any one day. If you have a smaller vehicle, we do allow multiple trips, but there is a cap to the amount that can be brought in. And that is mainly to dissuade contractors or anyone doing side jobs from also utilizing these services because this is primarily uh, available or it is available just to the residents. For our fees, uh, the anything under one cubic yard, which essentially is about two garbage carts worth of material is free. One to three cubic yards is $15 three to six cubic yards is $30, and six to eight cubic yards is $50. That's the same fee at both locations. And as you're coming in, our attendants there will inspect loads that are brought in and assess the fee upon entry based on the size that you're bringing in. And again, if you're bringing in multiple loads, let them know right away so they can get an idea when they give you a, a quote on the amount it would cost to, to drop that material off. So we also offer brush collection curbside and it's available to residents May 10th through October 8th this year. The brush is collected on your recycling week. So make sure that when you're setting out your recycle carts, that would be when you can set your brush out. If you have brush dropped out outside of those collection weeks, uh, you can, or if you have brush that you've accumulated outside of those coll collection weeks, you can still bring it into the yard. And as again, we, uh, the crew that is going around collecting the brush curbside will collect up to one cubic yard. Amounts beyond that, again, there would be a fee assessed, but we do still collect curbside uh, for amounts up to eight cubic yards. Is brush collected on holiday weeks? Brush is not collected on holiday weeks actually because our crews that collect the brush are also our spare drivers for refuse and recycling. So when we have holiday weeks, we have an increased amount of garbage and with being off on the holiday, those drivers get pulled to actually work on the routes for us to provide that service for that week. So we aren't able to run out a brush truck uh, those three holiday weeks this year are Memorial Day, May 31st through June 4th, the 4th of July, which is observed on July 5th, and it would cover July 5th through July 9th. And then lastly, Labor Day, which is September 6th through September 10th. 
So we have some basic brush collection guidelines for our crews as they go out and collect. Our brush collection routes are fairly large. So there's things residents can do that kind of expedite the collection and allow us to efficiently provide that service. Um, on, on your recycling day, we'll collect up to one cubic yard of brush. It must be set out on the space between the sidewalk and the curb. And one cubic yard, just for reference, is three foot by three foot by three foot, like if it was a cube, or essentially it'd be the equivalent of two 96 gallon garbage carts. That's also the size of the recycle carts in the city. So, so about two of those is considered a cubic yard. And make sure you cut down your branch lengths to five feet. That is so they can fit within the truck and uh, larger branches can cause damage to the truck. So reducing the size under five feet makes it easier for our truck to collect it. And lastly, I did see uh, for previous questions that were submitted, someone asked about thorny material. The best thing to do for any kind of thorny material to prevent you know, injury or issues with our crews would be to place that in some type of container. I'll cover that later, but just also to add that to a, you know, a guideline. This is an example because people are already beginning to set out brush of what a proper curb set out would look like. The items are stacked, ne stacked neatly and it is between the curb and sidewalk. No amount of the brush is either obstructing the roadway or the sidewalk. And our crews, when they collect this material, it's either by hand or they have a pitchfork. So making sure that the as it's set out, it's something keeping in mind that, you know, if it's a bunch of little sticks or different uh, items like that, it could be difficult or lengthy for us to sit there and pick up the small items. So keeping in mind when you're setting it out that that's normally, if it's making sure it's something that we could grab with the pitchfork or grab by hand. So can you set out brush in a container? There are, yes, you can. Uh, smaller pieces of brush, again, if it's real small sticks or if you have like a, a messy tree, like a weeping willow or something like that, um, you can set them out in containers. Make sure, you can also use plastic storage totes like uh, you would use for storing items in your basement or garage. Always make sure that, or and lastly, you can also use, let's say if you've replaced your refuse cart, you can utilize the uh, older refuse cart and just mark it brush. And all those types of containers, I would su strongly suggest, or it would, it would require to mark brush and that's just so as our crews are traveling around collecting the brush, they can easily identify it for collection and we don't miss anything. Sometimes if, if we don't see the brush outside the container or if it's a cart and the lid's completely flat, we, we don't know what's in it. And if it's again, refuse and recycling week, it's just gonna look like the other containers that are out there. So please make sure you're labeling those containers brush so our crew can easily identify them. So we do have some streets on the west end of the city that do not have curbs or sidewalks. And the guidelines for placing those out at that location would be to place them at the edge of the roadway. Um, again, making sure that the pile does not obstruct traffic so that, you know, that there might be cars trying to park on the road or some of the, uh, some of these examples of these roads are along the parkway where you're going to have residents walking dogs or running, uh, things like that. So again, just making sure that it, it also isn't obstructing any kind of passage in the road and making sure that, let's say if you do have some other items alongside your property, putting it in a clear area again, where the crew can identify that it's a pile of brush versus if it's kind of set back and you also have a like a hedge line or something like that, it can also be uh, missed if the crew is passing through. We have some examples of what not to do. Um, make sure you're not putting your brush out on non-brush collection weeks. 
because this may result in the in that uh, property receiving a violation notice. And that is mainly just because we want to make sure that the city is maintaining a, a clean and neat appearance. So making sure that, you know, we're, we're, the, the brush is going out on the collection weeks rather than just these piles out there sitting. And you can see sometimes if a pile has been out there for a while, it'll kill the grass or, you know, items like that. So just making sure, you know, once you have your collection weeks down, you're putting it out that week. Uh, we also ask that you do not put brush in bags. Plastic bags cannot, it's, it's a process when the comp or when the brush is mulched down that they have workers that kind of pick through to pick any kind of material out of it. But if we have a lot of plastic bags that would increase the cost of processing it, as well as the potential for the, the contractor that uh, deals with it now to say, you know what, we're not going to, we could end up having uh, loads that we're bringing in rejected because of this. Uh, also do not mix yard waste in your brush piles. Later on, I'll be going into what yard waste is but uh, when they're mixed, uh, usually the crew will leave a sticker and or sometimes they will take the brush and leave the yard waste just as a, to show what, what we're taking and what we're not taking with that collection. As well as do not place brush in the street. This takes up parking spaces on the east end of the city, as well as um, people will try, we have people that park on brush piles or block them in so that when we're going through collecting, we'll, we'll miss them because they're obstructed by vehicles. So again, just making sure that, that the guidelines of between the sidewalk and the curb is, is the ideal location to, to be collecting this material. So I got a couple examples here too of how not to set out a brush pile. Right here, it was a small pile of brush that was set out, I believe on Beloit, and you can see that uh, traffic has been driving over it. So now all the, what were normal size sticks have been crushed down into tiny little pieces of uh, brush. And this becomes difficult for us to collect. Again, because we're using a pitchfork, it's gonna go right between the tines and we're either gonna have to pick that up by hand or pass it and wait for it to be placed in a container for us to collect. Also, these piles like this where the brush is um, broken up very small and if they're in the street, as we're out street, street sweeping at night, uh, the street sweepers can pass over the pile and this can clog up the hoses and parts of the, the sweeper where it'll, it'll catch sideways and then the, it'll, it'll basically result in the operator having to either shut the machine down and clear it out or bring it back to the yard and clear it out. So again, uh, placing it out in the street is a very unideal situation. It creates a lot of uh, headaches for us. Another example is this is a larger brush pile. This would be above a cubic yard. So forestry would be collecting it. When it's placed out in the street, this here is taking up a parking spot. And if there was a car parked on the other side of the street, you're only creating now one lane of passage through, depending on how the car parks, it, may, it can make it very difficult, especially again on the east end of the city and narrow streets for vehicles to pass through when these piles are out uh, clogging up the road. So what happens if you receive a brush violation? A couple examples are brush is always collected curbside. So you may receive a brush violation if you set brush out in an alleyway. Our crews do not go through and collect brush in the alleys at all. It always has to be out at the curb. So you would receive a violation notice saying to either correct it or remove the material and take it to the yard Otherwise, there could potentially be a, a, fee, a cleanup fee assessed for us to come and collect it in the alley. Uh, also, to solve these brush violations, you can always take the items into the yard to get to get rid of it uh, because 
mo most likely we're not going to be returning to collect brush each day we have a route that's essentially the size of both our recycle routes where they have to move on to collect that area and it, there are days where we're pretty crunched for time to get that entire route done within eight hours so it gets difficult if we have to start jumping back to previous days to collect items that were set out wrong or items that were missed because of parked cards and in items or in situations like that and then lastly there will be a it's between like 42 or 48 and 72 hours to correct the issue that'll be and that's stated on the violation if nothing's done and that pile's just left out then we will come out and remove it but then that property will be billed for that pile for us to come out and remove it and to send a, a piece of either a piece of equipment out to collect it or uh individual and a refuse packer to go out and collect it so what about brush piles larger than one cubic yard here's a, a good example when i took this photo this this pile was about the size of a small car so uh a, a pile like this would be collected by our forestry department they handle the, the the piles between one to eight cubic yards and if you have one of these piles and it's either out not out at the curb or you've just set it out at the curb please contact the public works department at 302-8800 and just when you when you call and request a check for charge on a brush pile and one of uh, an individual from either forestry or sanitation will come out and assess a fee for that pile you'll notice that piles that have been assessed a fee and a charge slip written up will have orange spray paint on them and that's just so we can identify that that brush pile has been addressed and that the residents aware of it and it's something we have on file as a brush pile that we will eventually be cleaning up and for forestry they collect upon receipt of payment all brush all brush piles between one to eight cubic yards are collected on fridays so if you want to try setting that pile out a couple of days early paying for it it'll ideally be collected that friday the amounts for collecting those brush piles uh, a pile that's one to four cubic yards would be $50 and a pile that is four to eight cubic yards would be $100. And once again, you can, if the pile is on the property but not set out at the curb, you can also call out. Uh, I've come out and look and, and, and assessed it. it. It can be where it's been cut up if you don't wanna just have it sitting out there for that time. Just make sure that we have to basically leave a charge slip that'll give the amount for us to collect it. All right, we got some other items. Um, so what about like pine cones, apples, fruit from trees, whirly birds from maple trees, items like that? That is actually considered uh, fruit from the tree. And you can either place it in your garbage or into uh, a yard waste pile during yard waste collection weeks and or take it into the city yard year round and again it would be considered yard waste sometimes the fruit however will be just thrown into refuse just if it's a, like a crab apple tree or something like that um for ease of collection and to prevent clogging of storm drains we we do prefer that this is actually bagged and placed in garbage a lot of these uh Harder items can get, you know, fruit can get run over by the cars, and then you're going to have squirrels, raccoons, other animals. It, it, it's more of a nuisance when it's in the street. And also, our uh, street sweepers have trouble if it's like a pile of, of uh, again, like crab apples or something like that. It's uh, our street sweeper won't be able to, uh, or it'll, it'll be a struggle to clean that up. Um, so Jenny, I was going to say, if we want, we can open up the collections right now specific to brush collection, or I can continue to, uh, go through the slides and we'll just open it up for one round of questions at the end. 
Sure, if anyone has questions about brush collection and we'll get to yard waste next, you can drop those questions in the chat, which you'll see at the bottom of your screen. And we can tackle the brush collections now. Oops. <laughs> I'm not seeing any questions coming through, Derek. Um, okay. So you could go ahead to the yard waste portion, but again, if anyone does have questions, drop them in the chat and we can go back to them at the end. Cool. Sounds good. All right. So now moving on to yard waste. What is yard waste? Uh, yard waste is a plethora of items from your yard. It could be weeds, leaves, thatch, garden debris, pumpkins, uh, any type of vegetables from a garden or the stalks that the, that, that has uh, come from. One thing to, that to differentiate, however, is if a branch that has fallen from a storm that has leaves on it, that's still considered brush, that would not be considered yard waste. So an item like that, a, a branch that has leaves on it would be set up, set out curbside or taken to the yard as brush. Um, again, for items that are yard waste, making sure you aren't mixing these together. And I can go in late, uh, to later uh, the, the process of, you know, the contractor that handles this material. But essentially, the brush is mulched up to become mulch. And the yard waste is uh, ground up to become compost. So it, depending on the size of the branches and whatnot, it, it, that's where it matters is what type of material the, the contractor is going to turn uh, the end product into. So that's why we keep them separate. And it is uh, free actually to drop off any amount of yard waste at either Morgan Avenue or the city yard. There isn't a, ch a charge when it comes to yard waste. So where can uh, yard waste be dropped off? It's the same two places uh, as brush. You can either drop it off at our municipal yard, uh, 6300 West McGill, or Morgan Avenue drop-off site, which is 116th and Morgan. And it's just, it's on 116th, just south of Morgan Avenue. And keeping in mind also that Morgan Avenue is only open between June 1st to October 1st. And then uh, it is closed during it is closed to the public during uh, winter months. So when does the city collect yard waste? Uh, for this year, we do two collections, and this is where the yard waste can actually be set out at the curb or uh, into the road for us to collect. The first is is spring. It's actually coming up. It's um, I want to say it's next, yeah, starting next week. Um, Sunday, April 18th to Sunday, May 9th. That is our springtime yard waste collection. And then in the fall, which is primarily as everything's kind of dying off in the garden, as well as the leaves are falling, this is more like it's yard waste, but it's a, that's also our leaf collection. It's the same thing. So yard waste and leaves can go out. Uh, in the fall, it is Sunday, September 26th through Sunday, November 14th. And the city does not collect yard waste outside of these collection dates. Those two periods are the only time when you can be setting yard waste out uh, into the roadway to be collected. Other than that, it would uh, result in a violation notice issued to the property. So a lot of questions that we receive uh, regarding this is why doesn't the city extend yard waste collection to make it uh, long the periods longer or if it's like this year we're having kind of quite the warm spell uh, why why wouldn't we start it up earlier uh, there's actually a couple of re reasons that uh, to address that question uh, our road sweeping must actually first occur to remove all the garbage and I, uh, parts left from like as a pothole occurs or any kind of patch material, all the debris that our plows from scraping the road kind of kick into the curb. We like to run the sweepers through at least one to two times 
to get the road nice and clean for this material to then be set out. And that would be that would be because if if we just once it got warm, had everyone set the yard waste out into the roadway with that other material, the contractor is a, our contractor isn't going to like that because it's going to be a lot of rocks, garbage, other items turning up as they're grinding that material up, and they would probably most likely what we'd be turning over that to them would be considered too contaminated to become compost. So, also with warmer weather, our first priority besides sweeping is addressing potholes and road maintenance issues. Why this matters with when this collection occurs is that the staff that's hauling the yard waste with dump trucks or running that equipment at night, they are also doing the road maintenance. They're repairing our sewers, our storm sewers, our you know, any kind of areas where there's uh, like significant potholes, items like that. These, this same staff is out there addressing that. So we don't have the staffing that would allow for, for both those things to occur because it becomes, especially in the spring and even more so in the fall, it's a full team effort to get that, those items collected. So we have in upwards of two to three front end loaders and maybe a dozen dump trucks out hauling this material at any time once we get into full uh, collection with yard waste. So it, it takes a considerable amount of equipment and manpower to get that those items collected. So some yard waste collection guidelines for you. Yard waste can be raked into long, low piles along the curb line. Uh, normally those are referred to as windrows. And try to keep the debris about six inches out from the from the face of the curb and this allows for rain flow and any kind of water that would come through to travel to the storm drains without uh, being clogged up or dammed by the debris that you're setting out the yard waste uh, it also helps if if you notice that it's really windy out you can wet the piles down and that would prevent the leaves or other materials from being blown around by the wind. And then also making sure you're removing the pots and soil from plants before placing them in the curb line. Again, for like pots, those, those are considered garbage. So they cannot, be, they cannot be ground up. They cannot be any part of the compost. They would have to get removed before that material would be processed. And the soil, uh, I have a picture later on that kind of shows the equipment we use, but the soil is too fine for our uh, big loaders with the basket on front that is going around pushing these, these piles of yard waste that the, the dirt itself is just going to make it right through the, uh, the broom part of the basket and we'll end up with uh, long streaks of dirt and most of that dirt is going to stay out onto the uh, roadway and not actually get pushed up into the piles. And then again, you get a couple rainfalls, all that dirt is gonna make its way to the storm sewers, which result in us having to uh, deal with clogged uh, storm sewers. Here's an example of a proper yard waste set out at the curb. As you see, there is adequate uh, space given from the curb for water to go through and Again, just to reinforce it, uh, yard waste piles that are directly against the curb will result in street flooding at, if we get a significant rainfall. Here is an example of a proper yard waste set out without a curb. It is at the edge of the roadway. Again, the pile is not branching out far enough that it's obstructing traffic. And also make sure when you place this on the roadway you're placing it on the actual pavement if you place it on your grass well the crew that is running the loaders at night is going around collecting these they might not notice that that those items are on grass and as that basket's going to come across to to pick that pile up it might dig into the grass and the soil and damage your lawn so to make sure that again that the pile that's set out is not wide enough that it's obstructing traffic, but also that it's not on your lawn to prevent any kind of damage from your lawn. 
some examples of what not to do. Um, on the west end of the city, do not place these uh, materials in any type of uh, drainage culvert. Uh, do not place this out in alleys. In uh, Some residences still have the old concrete ash boxes, uh, refuse containers or piles in the yard or driveway. We, we, the, the loaders cannot go onto your property to collect it. And uh, refuse crews would not collect yard waste that's in the refuse carts. They would leave a notice that that would have to get removed because Wisconsin state law does define that we cannot send our, uh, as we send our loads of garbage off to the landfill, they cannot contain yard waste. Also, do not park vehicles on or near the yard waste piles, and that is these, the loaders that collect it themselves are large equipment, so they need to be able to kind of snake their way through to collect these piles. And if there's tight areas or people are parking on top of them, on top of these piles, we don't, have, we have no way to collect them. And then they'll sit there and just get packed down onto the roadway and it'll be a challenge in the end to collect it. Also, there's a hazard of, of fire if a vehicle parks on top of a, a dry yard waste or leaf pile, potentially with their exhaust igniting the material underneath their car. Um, do not burn yard waste. Open air burning is not permitted in the city of West Dallas. And do not add non-organic items into your yard waste piles out into the road. Uh, some examples that I've personally seen, uh, people throwing concrete pavers, any type of like railroad ties or timbers that they have in a, a raised garden or flower bed, the uh, landscaping felt, any kind of the, that material cannot be placed out into the street or into those piles that is not in any way compostable. So there would, it would, that would be too contaminated for us to collect as well as, and we, we, I actually didn't include any pictures, but the bricks and items like that can actually damage our equipment from trying to collect it. It can uh, bend or break the basket, take some of the broom attachments off. It, it generally, it, 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 again, it's a, it can be a real headache when we have piles that have items uh, that shouldn't be in them. Another common question that we get is what to do with grass clippings. The city of West Dallas does not accept grass clippings. Uh, your best options to deal with grass clippings would either be to compost them at home in a compost bin or if you're looking at purchasing a mower or have a, a lawnmower making sure that it has its mulch kit on it so that it's mulching the grass rather than either bagging it or shooting it out the side so you know you get the it, it's too much the, the grass that's being put onto the lawn is is too big and it's unsightly so your best bet would be to get a mulch kit for your mower um, and just of note not only does mulching provide your lawn with some of the same benefits as putting compost on it but it's a much faster alternative than bagging your grass clippings, driving them down to our yard where we're unfortunately gonna have to tell you that we don't accept grass clippings and then you're gonna have a couple bags of grass clippings that are gonna be a struggle to get rid of. So best bet for grass clippings, just leave it on your lawn and let, it, uh, let nature take its course. So here's a couple examples of how not to set out yard waste. Uh, this first one, someone put yard waste too close to a storm drain. And you can see that because it was against the curb, you can see some of the yard waste that's now made its way onto the grates of the storm drain. And most likely we're going to have to, at some point, clear out that storm drain because it's going to, there's probably more of that pile that's inside of that storm drain. And if, if it gets too clogged with uh, material, the storm drains will not be able to handle, again, a significant rainfall, which could potentially cause street flooding during, during such an event. And again, from a, from a cost and manpower aspect, the more times that we, we normally have a couple year cycle that we clean out storm drains, 
well, that'll interrupt our process of cleaning out these storm drains in in, in an organized and efficient manner because we have to keep pulling the crew away to go and address storm drains that have now become blocked up and we have street flooding and, uh, and other problems. And that takes time away from what they're normally doing because we got to, all right, you, you got to go across the city because this street has flooding and then, you know, back the other way. So it just, it, again, it's kind of creating sometimes it, just setting that a ways away from a storm drain could, could save a lot of time in the long run for us. Oops, let me back that up. Uh, another example here, uh, someone who has a curb line placed yard waste just directly on their grass between the sidewalk and the curb. We cannot collect this. The loader would not be able to go out of the, the, the basket would tear up the lawn. So something like this would just get passed by the crew. And then if the collection time, if it, if that eventually didn't make its way into the road for us to collect, this property would be receiving a violation notice to either take the items into the city yard or if they just leave it out there, eventually we're going to come remove it and then the property would be filled for the time and equipment that it takes to, to clean up something like that just to prevent. Uh, so again, to prevent that from uh, being an issue. The, uh, if you have a curb line, making sure you're leaving the pile out into the street where the equipment can get to it. So what happens if you receive a yard waste violation? It's very similar to a brush violation. Uh, making sure that you're setting your yard waste out during those two collect, uh, collection periods. I'll repeat them again. Again, spring collection is April 18th through May 9th. And our fall collection is of September 26th through November 14th. Anytime that yard waste would be set out outside of that, we, uh, myself, the other truck driver, Lee Brian Hill, and our my supervisor, uh, Sarah Diebitz, we're going around writing violations up for either residents to remove those piles from the roadway and take them into the yard, or if it's something that's just going to be ignored, then we come out, clean it up, and it gets billed to the proper, property. And again, it's important to keep the road free of yard waste and debris because during the summer, uh, the, ra the rainfall will get more, will become more and more frequent. And again, this is to prevent localized flooding, street flooding issues like that that occur and, and blocked uh, storm sewers. So if you want to check for your spring and fall yard waste collection, the city website has um, a page called Leaf Relief and you can go directly onto the city website and search leaf relief and it will have a the, the city divided up by routes for us to collect this is an example from last year and it'll show how the zones are the weeks that we're anticipating being able to collect certain zones and then once that area is collected it'll give the next projected time that that area will be collected and so between each essentially what we're trying for is each week we're going to be doing the entire city from uh by zone to try to keep up with now sometimes in the fall that becomes difficult we don't always again these are projected times but that is the ideal goal is to provide a, a pass through of the city each week that we're providing that collection. All right, I'm gonna hold off on this one because I got a couple more slides and then I'll just open it up to like a one kind of direct based questions for the entire uh, presentation here. So uh, just some uh, did you know facts. So the city overnight sends out multiple front end loaders that collect the yard waste piles. Here's an example. These are actually uh, baskets that our fleet uh, fabricate themselves, and it's it's a, a custom um, a custom design. But we use that overnight. If you ever hear any noise, we apologize, but we're out there collecting. That's best because of the way the night parking works. 
that we can go through and collect one side of the uh, the, the east side during uh, when everyone's collected uh, parked on the odd side, and then as everyone parked on the even side, we'll go through and collect the west side of the street. And these loaders are putting in eight hours a night, traveling up and down the roads, pushing small yard waste piles into the piles that we collect during the day. The next slide I have is an example of us. This is during the day when we collect the, the large yard waste piles. Most likely you've seen them throughout the city, especially in the fall. We send out a couple different pieces of equipment, a front end loader, uh, what is called, it's that uh, red little sidewalk tractor called a holder that basically pushes the leaves into the bucket of the front end loader. And at any given time, again, we're going to have maybe a dozen dump trucks and even our uh, larger, on the, on the first introduction slide, we have a larger uh, hook truck that moves the boxes around at the yard. Sometimes we have so much leaves out in the city that we'll take those large roll-off boxes out and the loaders will be loading those too. So we can, we can move a lot of leaves very quickly. And on average, we process haul around 2,000 to 2,500 tons of brush and 3,500 to 4,000 ton, uh, tons of yard waste annually. And that is picked up either curbside through our yard that residents are dropping off, but all that material is stuff during the year we're moving around to be processed into mulch and compost. So the contractor we utilize is actually Blue, Blue Ribbon Organics. Um, it takes a short stop. When we remove it from the roads, it gets brought out to Morgan Avenue. Blue Ribbon Compost uh, then sets up at Morgan Avenue and grinds all this material down where it is hauled by semi truck over to their location. This is where their barn is. You can actually see it from the freeway. It's down kind of off uh, 27th Street and Seven Mile Road. And that material then is composted at their site, but it's ground up uh, by our site. So that's another purpose that Morgan Avenue serves for us is a location for the the brush and the yard waste throughout the year to be processed by our uh, contractor. And here's an example of just the machinery they use. So we have our piles of brush and our piles of leaves, and it's all run through a large uh, chipper and ground down. And the brush and yard waste that Blue Ribbon Organics processes is made into organic compost or mulch for gardens or farmers. And as just a fun fact, uh, anyone can also purchase this material through Blue Ribbon Organics. It's, a, it's available to the public as well for purchase. And that is, uh, that is the end of the presentation for brushing up on brush collection and yard waste. I'll open it up again for anyone that has uh, questions. Thank you, Derek. We do have some questions. Uh, when summer storms knock down large tree branches into the street, what should a property owner do? So for a, so if it's something that's obstructing a roadway or parking or into the roadway where it could be a hazard, sometimes too, another example is maybe the branch broke, but it's, but it's hanging. Your best uh, option would be to contact the non-emergency police department number. Actually, this is my week right now where I'm on watch. And each week we have someone from the streets and sanitation division that's on watch throughout the year where we are on call to come out and assess a situation like that. Um, if it's a small branch, you can always move it to the curb line or something if it's something that the brush truck could collect. But if it's like a very large or significant branch, your best bet would be to contact us and we can come out and determine if we either need to set up barricades until we can address it during normal business hours, or if it's something where we'll call in the forestry department outside of the, uh, as like an emergency call in for them to, to remove that from the roadway to, to open up safe passage on the street and pretend any, uh, prevent any kind of hazard, especially if the, the branch is uh, hanging. 
So uh, that, that would be your best bet. Once again, yeah, contact the non-emergency police department number. I think it's, uh, I want to say it's 302-8000. Thank you. Our next question is, does the city offer free mulch? So at our Morgan Avenue drop off, we do have mulch available. I believe um, if you want to take that uh, for that, if they want to leave their email, uh, I can always contact them if it's different, but most likely I want to say any, any, of the uh, chipped up items, usually it's gonna be the, the branches that have fallen during the storm. Forestry does have a pile out there that residents can take mulch from. So, uh, and that there would not, it's it's free of charge to, to take mulch from that. Uh, not so much with the compost, Blue Ribbon takes the compost from the yard waste, but if it's chipped up trees for mulch, for like around a tree or a flower bed or something like that, we do we do have some available at Morgan Avenue. Right. Derek, are vines considered brush? Hmm. I would say yes. Uh, vines, be, because it's once the leaves kind of fall, as we, the leaves are on it, but once the leaves fall off, you can tell that it's uh, it does have a bark to it. So I would say I would say if it's if it's a vine that is on like the side of a house and if you can tell that it has a woody texture too you could set it out as, as brush if it's something like a pumpkin vine or something from a garden that would be yard waste i know it's i hope that answer you know i don't want to give you an answer that's like clear as mud but um that would be the best bet is if, it, if it's something that is producing fruit in a garden that involves a vine that would be yard waste if it's uh uh, something along the fence or on the side of a house that has a, a woody bark to it, that would be brush. Great. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. If you have questions, feel free to contact the Department of Public Works, or you can visit the City of West Dallas website at westdalluswi.gov slash dpw. This presentation will be on the city's YouTube channel, so you can go back to it at any time. And we'll be sending a survey your way, and we'd love to hear your feedback about tonight's presentation as well. So thank you, Derek. Thank you, everyone, and have a good night.